All right. It looks it looks like at this moment here, folks, that some protesters now have started a fire in the middle of a street. They're burning whatever they can find right now. And you can see there is a car tr maybe trying to move and get out of the way. It says, you know what? There's a fire going on right by my car. I need to get out of here. Yeah, look at this. They are starting a fire right in the middle of the street. This car is trapped right now. Can you imagine if you're the driver here? You are scared. You don't know what they're doing, what is going on. And wow, scary situation here, everyone. Once again, folks, you are watching live coverage here on the Fox 10 and News Now stream where protesters are now starting a fire here in the middle of the street on the campus of UC Berkeley. Viewer discretion is advised. We don't know what's going to happen here.
All right, folks, coming up next here on the Fox 10 News Now stream, Samia is coming up. She'll be here with you for the next two hours here, providing a coverage of this protest happening right now at UC Berkeley. Thanks so much for joining. Samia, coming up next. And there we go, folks. They're rushing the fencing here. Here we go. The students have now rushed the fencing here. And they are taking away the fencing. They are... Uh, Take a look here, folks. They are now attacking this building. It almost looks like they're having, a, it looks like Roman candles of some sort, maybe launching it at this building here. They have taken down the perimeter and now have gone on full attack mode here. Sami is coming up next to provide live coverage for you here on the Fox 10 News Now stream. Viewer discretion is advised. We don't know what's going to happen. All right, guys, Samia joining you now with extensive coverage of chaos in Berkeley. That's right. Thousands of people have gathered to protest the speech of an alt-right leader. Many people surprised that Yiannopoulos would be speaking at UC Berkeley, commonly known as such a liberal university. As you can see, many people not happy with the speech. Thousands of people protesting. Fires have been started. Viewer discretion is advised. We'll continue to bring you these live aerials, courtesy of our Fox station in the Bay Area of California.
Again, viewer discretion is advised. Obviously, it looks like this scene at Berkeley is getting quite chaotic. I want to go ahead and move the lower third banner so you can get a full look at the fire, the situation there in Berkeley. Many people have gathered to protest. Again, it's quite a chaotic scene in Berkeley, California. All right, everyone, Sami here. If you guys want to share your thoughts on the situation in Berkeley, you can tweet me at Sami at Fox 10. We'll go ahead and read your tweets live here on air while we continue to bring you these live aerials of the chaos at UC Berkeley. I'm going to go ahead and switch to another feed of the protest chaos in Berkeley. Milo Yiannopoulos speaking at UC Berkeley. Protesters. Not happy about it. We have two different helicopter feeds coming in now. You can see this feed right here. Oh, looks like the camera is now panning away, but it was just zoomed in on police units responding to the scene. You can see fires. Fires have started. Absolute chaos on the UC Berkeley campus, one of the country's top universities, dealing with protesters, destruction, all in response to Milo Yiannopoulos' presence. Yiannopoulos became 
quite the public figure on Twitter during the 2016 election, a figure in the so-called alt-right movement. He was banned from Twitter. Some people describing him as the number one Twitter troll. We have a few different helicopter shots from the scene, from the school. Again, hundreds, perhaps thousands, protesting at UC Berkeley. And it looks like we now have some ground shots from the scene as well. Here are some ground shots from the scene as well. Oh, you can hear it's in the an back. alarm. It's in the very back. Again, a ground look at the scene of the protest at UC Berkeley. We also have some live aerials. We'll show you those in a minute. They want us to go. They want us to go to the other side of the street. What started as a protest has turned into violence. Fires have started. Again, this is the Berkeley campus, UC Berkeley, traditionally a very liberal university. Students and others reacting to the presence of a alt-right figure on campus. Again, police were bracing for this major protest tonight as conservative fire around Milo Yiannopoulos planned to speak at UC Berkeley. Several campus groups planned demonstrations with some saying they hoped to shut down the talk entirely. Now, rowdy protests at UC Davis last month forced the cancellation of speeches by Yiannopoulos and former pharmaceutical executive Martin Shkreli. Yiannopoulos, who writes for Breitbart, is a provocateur whose language dovetails with that of the so-called alt-right movement although he disputes that classification. All right, guys, I want to go ahead and show you guys those aerials of the protest again. We have both aerials and ground shots. We're going to be switching back and forth between the two.
go ahead and put this tweet on the screen. A couple of you guys tweeting me similar things. Thomas Ng saying, Milo has denounced the alt-right from the start. Please report this. You can check for yourself. As such, we have updated the lower third. We've described Milo now as just a controversial figure. He himself may not associate with the alt-right, but as many publications suggest, his message often resonates with those in the alt-right movement. If you guys have thoughts on the situation and the chaos in Berkeley, please tweet me at SamiaFox10. I'm going to go ahead and show your tweets on the screen. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this problematic situation in Northern California. Now, although UC Berkeley is traditionally known as a very liberal university and a liberal city, the college has also reiterated its commitment to free speech, which dates back to the 60s when students fought for their rights in the famous Berkeley free speech movement. Now, in an email sent out to students, university administrators warned that a controversial controversial speaker would be on campus tonight and that they were therefore anticipating a major protest demonstration leading up to and surrounding this event that may result in large crowds and difficulties transiting the area around the venue. In the email, students were told their safety and well-being were their top priorities. Now the email went on to remind students that the campus has several resources that they may wish to explore, including counseling services, should they be offended by the appearance of Milo on campus. The college also provided students with hate crime and harassment hotlines. That's when they also reiterated their commitment to free speech, saying, please know that the campus is committed to our values of tolerance, inclusion, and diversity. The campus is also committed to freedom of speech, and UC Berkeley as a public institution cannot ban expression based on its content or viewpoints. I want to go in and show some of the tweets that you guys are sending me. Rick saying, Berkeley no longer home of free speech movement. Now the students are attempting to decide for us what we can and cannot hear. Another tweet sent to me. This is exactly what intolerance looks like, not even willing to accept an opposing view at an institution that should promote it. Again, we have views from the ground as well as aerials of the protests underway at Berkeley. I want to go ahead and show a few more viewer tweets. If you guys have something you want to send or say, feel free to send me your thoughts via Twitter.
All right, gonna go ahead and read a few more viewer tweets. Just watched a Milianopolis video today where he spoke against white supremacy. These protesters not too bright. Milo is just a gay dude trying to stop the left. Daniel Bailey is saying this is a perfect example of the regressive left's attempt to silence the people. As a Berkeley student, I am very distraught by the unrest. Might get psychological help tomorrow. Where is the police? This should not be allowed to happen. The little fires looked more like flares being tossed on the ground, not actual fires. These people need to be arrested. If I did such things, I'd surely be in jail. The people have spoken. President Trump has won. That comment coming in from Matt Schmidt. Luke Moe sending in this message. This is exactly what Milo wants. This is why he's famous. Violent protests. Bright Breitbart can cover afterwards. Kale Rose sending me this message. Milo is in here and completely calm. Faith in the justice system. Vape Dad, meanwhile, tweeting me saying this goes beyond protesting. Protesting doesn't ordinarily require the active intervention of riot police. This is criminal. As you can see, a lot of chaos erupting at UC Berkeley. Alan tweeting me, this is an absolute all-out assault on free speech. Have they started the fire? I feel bad for Milo's reputation, but he's a bit guy. He's not one to go down. And Raquel saying, I think it's very sad that these students preach for their voice to be heard, but when someone speaks against them, riots ensue. Well said, Raquel. Here is another comment coming in from not a Tory. Northern California should take lessons in how to riot from Northern Ireland. Meanwhile, Matthew tweeting me saying these protesters are a joke. They just want to riot and break things. Let's give you guys a quick look at the view from the ground. It looks relatively calm. People walking calmly. It was a bit chaotic beforehand, but it looks like things have calmed down quite a bit from this angle. However, here is that aerial view once again of the protest at UC Berkeley. And it looks like Chopper is leaving the scene of this protest. So we're going to go ahead and take you guys back now to our the to the ground images from UC Berkeley. And it looks like we've gotten our other Chopper feedback. So we do have aerials once again coming in from that protest that seemingly has calmed down at Berkeley. Nope, looks like people are running once again. Unclear why. Again, crowds now starting to run. You can see the aerial shot there. Lots of people running. Suddenly, a large group dispersing. It's unclear why. Again, hundreds, if not thousands, gathered at the UC Berkeley campus to demonstrate against the presence of a controversial speaker. I am doing, I'm doing a phoner, 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 phoner.
All right, guys, we're going to go back to those live aerials from the scene of this protest at UC Berkeley. Again, many people, hundreds if not thousands, gathered at UC Berkeley, a traditionally liberal school, to protest the presence of a controversial conservative figure. A large fire erupting on the campus of UC Berkeley, a result of this protest. Hundreds of people gathered to protest a controversial figure speaking at one of the nation's top universities. are going to switch between the aerial shot and the ground shot of this protest. You can see many people gathered around this venue where a controversial figure is scheduled to speak. You can see fire on the ground. You can see groups of people watching as the fire continues to burn. Hundreds still in attendance at the protest at UC Berkeley. I want to go ahead and show some of your tweets here on air. Share your point of view with the viewers. Caro the Fish tweeting me, these rioters are essentially Trump re-election campaign 2020. Independents and moderates are not okay with this. Hashtag Milo. Meanwhile, Tucker Walton tweeting me, impassioned people are bound to protest a person who makes their living off of hate speech. Remember, protests are protected too. Corbin Ryan, meanwhile, tweeting me, since when has protesting become the ability to silence others' opinions and block their right to voice their ideals? This is sad. And Raquel, Raquel tweeting me, what is your opinion on Milo speaking at this event? 
well, Raquel, I think it is a free country and everyone has a right to speak wherever they may choose to speak. It is up to the public to decide whether they will attend or not. But no one has the right to be silenced, Raquel. This is America. Meanwhile, Tiger Jackson commenting the regressive left students silencing free speech but always want their voices to be heard. Just awful. I want to go ahead and show you guys the view from the ground once again. A massive protest underway on the campus at UC Berkeley.
All right, viewers that are joining us, the viewers who may not know this update, all UC Berkeley buildings are on lockdown as protests erupt at UC Berkeley. The Milo event has been canceled. UC Berkeley police has tweeted that the event was canceled. Shelter in place if you're on campus. All buildings are on lockdown. Again, the event has been canceled after these massive protests. The school is on lockdown and the event has been canceled. Again, here is a tweet from Berkeley that the scheduled performance has been canceled. More info to come. Again, it looks like protesters have gotten their wish. Again, the controversial Milo Yiannopoulos speech at UC Berkeley met an early demise Wednesday evening as protesters grew violent, breaking fences and windows, setting off fireworks and throwing smoke bombs, forcing police to issue an order to shelter in place and put all campus buildings on lockdown. Now Milo was invited by the Berkeley Republican Club. Milo is a polarizing editor from Breitbart News who's been criticized as racist, misogynistic, and as a white supremacist. However, university officials tweeted about 20 minutes ago that the event had been canceled and Yiannopoulos, a self-proclaimed internet troll, had been escorted off campus. Leading up to his visit, Yiannopoulos had raised an issue facing campuses across America at the dawn of a Trump presidency. What is the line between free speech and hate speech? He had also come under fire for fanning the flames of white supremacy by creating the Annapolis Privilege Grant, which is being described as a college grant program for white males. On Wednesday, that's today, UC Berkeley officials stressed that they themselves did not invite Annapolis. However, they did send students an email saying that the university was a tolerant place and that all points of view were welcome. Now similarly rowdy protests at UC Davis last month prompted campus Republicans to cancel his appearance at the last minute. UC Davis is about an hour to an hour and a half away from this campus UC Berkeley. Both Davis and Berkeley are in Northern California, one of the most liberal parts of the country.
go ahead and show you guys the UC Berkeley police updates. They've been tweeting quite a bit. Here are some of their tweets. They tweeted 24 minutes ago. At Milo at Cal event has been canceled. Milo has left campus. Milo event canceled. Shelter in place if on campus. All campus buildings on lockdown. Updates regarding lockdown shelter in place to follow for your safety. Stay away from the Sprout Plaza area. Milo at Cal seems to be the hashtag. It looks like, according to this Twitter user, Protesters were chanting, no Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. That's what they were protesting. Excuse me, that's what they were chanting as they protested. No KKK, no fascist, no KKK, no fascist USA. No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. No All right, we're going to go back to those live images at Berkeley. since one of the unique things about news now is that it's an interactive live stream i do want to go ahead and show some of your tweets on air many of you guys tweeting me your thoughts on the protesters at berkeley how do you feel that they handled this situation well one viewer says will these protesters be charged with felony rioting looks like a few have gone past the threshold Brian saying, ironic that leftist protesters have succeeded in silencing a speaker at Berkeley, home of the free speech movement in the 60s. Meanwhile, Rockstar Republic saying, that is not protesting, that is terrorism. Literal bigotry in action. This is shameful. Raquel tweeting me again saying, the best part is that they ruined their own campus to limit the free speech of a single person. Outstanding work. Death Canoli tweeting me saying his point of view is already well known and it is awful. We don't need more of it. That's why people are coming for the scam artist. Rancid Butter tweeting me, Milo is a hate-filled opportunist Gamergate troll. He needs to be protested. Nothing is stopping Milo from speaking inside. Chet Hubbard tweeting me saying, as a member of the Berkeley Greek community, this whole thing is highly offensive. Doug, meanwhile, saying, rioting only proves Milo's point. If they could prove his arguments to be false, they wouldn't be starting fires. Another tweet coming in, is this supposed to be a peaceful protest? People have lit things on fire and are smashing things up. Police must move in. Anthony tweeting me, free speech is the core value of Western civilization. Trying to silence someone is not a protest. It is a riot. Let's take you back to some of the ground shots that were coming in now. All right, let's continue to share some of your thoughts, the viewers tuning in on our Fox News Now stream. Claire Banks saying, don't they realize that starting fires isn't helping their cause? Wasn't it the fascists themselves that were against free speech? Another tweet coming in, I was liberal, but all this pointless protesting caused me to change my voter registration and join the NRA. Interesting. Anna, meanwhile, tweeting me saying, Milo is a misogynist through and through. Hate speech does not equal free speech. Danny saying, I love you. Put me on the live stream. There you go, Danny. That is for you. And Mary tweeting me saying, they should be cited money for manpower used to protect and clear the scene, property damage, and other damages caused. 
let's go ahead and take you back to a ground view of this protest at UC Berkeley. Another tweet from our viewer, Tommy, saying someone should go tell those liberal protesters that the fires they're starting are hurting the environment. Many tweets coming in. We'll go ahead and feature a few more of yours here on News Now. Like this one from Zachary. These people are terrorists. Rioting and violence are the tools of the ignorant and only proves Milo's point. A handful of viewers tweeting me that feeds their following suggests that police are asking the protester to disperse within 10 minutes, otherwise they will face the wrath of tear gas. It's possible that tear gas may be involved in just a few minutes. Again, I am reading the tweets coming in from new viewers. We appreciate everyone tuning in, sharing their thoughts. I'm going to go ahead and read a few more of your tweets. TJ Bingle saying, curious as to if the campus is going to stand by the protest or the Republican group's freedom of speech and assembly. FC7822 saying, stop calling these people protesters. They are rioters. Eric Bazell saying, do they even know that they are supporting and even being fascist by causing property damage, intimidation, and hate? Damien saying, any damages done at UC Berkeley by protesters should not be covered by taxpayer money. Let Berkeley recover losses from students themselves. Meanwhile, John saying, look at all the bad parenting went wrong at UC Berkeley. And this viewer saying, how can they call Milo, who is a gay Jewish man with a black boyfriend, homophobic or racist? I had a few people tweet me similar thoughts. This viewer saying, hypocrites get offended by the truth. This is true for leftists. This protest is a, turned into a riot. Aesthetics tweeting me, is starting a garbage fire a good way to prove your point? They built a wall around it. How ironic. Interesting observation. Meanwhile, Luke tweeting me, it's almost as if these young people are living in the dark ages or something. I am ashamed for my fellow millennials. Deplorable tweeting, the protesters win tonight. Milo wins tomorrow and the day after and the day after. Hashtag Milo at Cal. That seems to be the official hashtag associated with this event. In case you're just joining us, the Milo speech has been canceled at Berkeley. Milo has been taken off campus.
However, the protest continues. I'm going to continue to read a few more of your tweets. Here's one tweet that said, Last time I checked, universities weren't daycare centers. They were places where people came to learn and exchange ideas. I want to go ahead and show you guys the ground shot, the ground view from the school where the protest is underway once again. Again, controversial figure Milo Yiannopoulos was scheduled to speak at Berkeley. However, that speech has since been canceled. Just some clarification, a tree was set on fire at Berkeley a tree was set on fire. Here are those live aerials once again. You can see hundreds still present at the Milo protest. The official hashtag for the event, Milo at Cal. Hashtag Milo at Cal.
All right, joining me now is Fox 10 anchor John Hook, who's from Northern California. Oh yeah, I we watched all this stuff in the 60s at Berkeley. Right, so many viewers tweeting me, ironic how, you know, the place where the free speech movement started, now people are protesting Milo's right to free speech. What's your thought on that? I think they're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the First Amendment protects speech that you abhor. Right. It doesn't protect necessarily the speech you agree with. It protects the speech that you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. And that's really the underpinnings of the First Amendment. And um, I think the, the UC Davis chancellor, interim chancellor, put it very well. Let me read it to you. They canceled a Milo event there a couple of weeks ago. Right. Here's what he said. This was Ralph Hexter, and I put it on my Facebook page if you'd like to weigh in on it. He said when they canceled that he was deeply disappointed. And this is a quote from him. Our community is founded on principles of respect for all views, even those that we personally find repellent. He said in a statement, as I have stated repeatedly, a university is at its best when it listens to and critically engages opposing views, especially ones that many of us find upsetting or even offensive. Right. How are you going to have an argument about these kinds of things in society if you shut down the argument mm -hmm. and don't let it unfold. Right. Why not go and listen to the guy and respectfully argue with him mm -hmm. to expose him if that's what you're trying to do. Right. But to stop it with violence, stop the event, it stifles free speech, and it shows intolerance. Mm -hmm. When these are supposedly people who are the most tolerant, they're tolerant of everything until you disagree with them. Right. Then they're no longer tolerant anymore. And I think that is small-minded. I think that's the problem with both sides. I mean, I think there are people on the extreme right and on the extreme left who don't want to hear the other side's opinion. Right. And, I think and Donald Trump's been accused of this, mm -hmm. of going after media organizations that are disagreeing with what he's doing. Um, he's well, called it fake news and all of this kind of stuff. So right. these are debates that you have, but the way to handle it, I believe, is to is to battle it out in the marketplace of ideas. Right. This stuff serves no purpose but to make Berkeley, frankly, look small, intolerant, uh, petulant. I don't think this solves anything. Hey, this what it does is Christina. it tells everybody, if you disagree with our worldview, you're not welcome here. Right. That is, that is not what our, our learning institutions are supposed to be about. Right, and I was telling the viewers, viewers Berkeley, isn't, Berkeley is one of the top universities in the country. It's the number one public university in mm -hmm. the country. It's one of the top 25 My dad schools. got his master's from there. Right, and it's known to be a liberal school. I believe that let everyone speak as they will. Show up if you want to show up, if you want to hear what this guy's t guy has to say. But don't resort to violence. And, and to me, even to go there and, and show up and shout him down, I don't like that either. Mm -hmm. I don't like when protesters go in and shout the speaker down. Because, again, it's let the speaker speak, respond in a respectful way, and have an interchange. Um, what did you think about the protests? See, I was okay with protests ridiculous. as long as they were peaceful protests. Right. I think right. that once they resorted to... They're bashing up their own community. They're right. bashing in their student center. And, and frankly, let's be honest, there are a lot of outside agitators that are part of this group. This was organized primarily on social media by some of the activist groups in Berkeley. Some of these people are not students. Mm. So you don't want to paint the students with a broad brush. But I suspect there are a lot of agitators in the crowd, the guys in the black masks, who... Um, are professional agitators. Mm -hmm. Well, we do know that there were student groups that were speaking out that, that were planning to protest, but you're right. There are people that are just seeking to cause chaos and sure. destruction. But if you think it through, this kind of thing does not make a lot of sense. To me, what makes a lot more sense were the protests we saw a week and a half ago, where people organically gathered in Phoenix and a million two million around the country to express their displeasure with things going on in the Trump administration. They did it peacefully, they made their point, and they also started to galvanize in a way that could be a, um, a political force down the line. They're already talking about more protests. 
uh, in April. So that strikes me as far more productive than what we're seeing tonight in Berkeley. Right. So Here's the thing. When, when Middle America sees this, um, John Lennon put it well in the song Revolution. Mm -hmm. When you talk about destruction, don't you know that you can count me out? He was making the point mm -hmm. that when you get into this kind of stuff of destroying stuff, and destroying property and using violence, that it's a turnoff to a right. lot of people. The very people you want to convert, you're turning them off with this kind of stuff. Right. They have no respect for your message because they don't agree with the way that you're trying to communicate it. You've, you've lost your message to the people you're trying to convert, the people right. who are on the edge going, which way should I go? Right, because if you just protested peacefully, you could have continued with your chants, held up signs, we could have covered this protest. Now Objectively, they're gonna, they're gonna, and they could have, the people that you were trying to convince right. would have listened. But now all we're looking at are big fires on the Berkeley campus. Is this, um, is this really much different than Ferguson erupting and burning down Ferguson and creating right. havoc within their own community where they have to go back tomorrow and live and work? Now you've burned out businesses. Um, I understand that they're trying to get noticed and they sometimes think that violence is the only way they're going to be noticed. If right. they don't, if they don't go to extreme measures, it gets lost. Let's let's read his yeah, statement I'm go ahead and from Milo. Screen. Do you want to go ahead and read that? Sure. I'm going to put this on the screen now. Um, Milo wrote eight minutes ago. I've been evacuated from the UC Berkeley campus after violent left-wing protesters tore down barricades, lit fires, threw rocks and Roman candles at the windows, and breached the ground floor of the building. My team and I are safe, but the event has been canceled. I'll let you know when the facts become more, when the facts become clear. One thing we do know for sure, the left is absolutely terrified of free speech and will do literally anything to shut it down. Now, wow. like him or not, he's making a very important point that they're hurting their own cause. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just... Uh, this stuff, I grew up with this stuff in the 60s in San Francisco right. and in Berkeley. You're very familiar with this area. Very. Um, and some of the stuff is productive and some of it is not productive. And I suspect, again, for the people who are in the middle kind of looking at it going, you know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with Trump. I'm uncomfortable with these guys and their message. If they're trying to convert and change hearts and minds, I don't know that this is the best way to do it. Right. Now, for their own group and all these folks, it's great. They're having a party. They think it's great. They think they've really accomplished something. But if you're trying to change hearts and minds, mm -hmm. I don't know that this is the best way to do it. Right. I know many of the viewers have been tweeting me their thoughts as well. A lot of people saying... Go back for a moment. Which one? This Carol one? the Fish. Go ahead and read that one. Liberalism is by definition being open-minded to various ideas. You see Berkeley and the left is no longer liberal. That is a very interesting perspective. Um, don't you want to know, if he's the enemy in your mind, right. don't you want to hear him out and beat him at his own game and right. argue with him and win the argument on the merits? Not because you burn the, the uh, crush the front of the uh, student union, um, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it's, it's, it's troubling to me because this stuff, I understand that protest, sometimes you, you need to, in the protest, that's fine. That's fine. But when you get into damaging stuff and causing mayhem and maybe getting people hurt in your own group, I, I don't know that that's very productive. I want to go ahead and read this tweet from Cameron. Cameron sharing his thoughts. This is vandalism at its finest. This isn't exercising their civil rights and liberties. They are abusing it in reference to the destruction at the UC Berkeley campus. I agree. Campus. I agree. I mean, it's criminal also. I mean, it's criminal behavior, and there and are going to be people arrested. Um, and again, I just get back to you've you've got to try to win the argument in the arena of the argument you don't you don't need to 
Um, you don't need to go to these lengths of where you're destroying public property, destroying your own school. I just don't think that that is a, it's not a very uh, evolved position mm -hmm. to take. And for people who are supposedly highly educated at Berkeley, you would think there'd be some reasonable voices saying, hey, let's protest, let's make our thing known. But like um, you mentioned, it's not just people that attend Berkeley. It could be people that are just living in the no, Bay Area that showed up. No, that's definitely a part. That is an element in this crowd, and it always has been in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. um, and there were organizers of this on social media who are maybe not even connected to the university. Right. It's hard to know. We'll, it's, we'll it's find a, out. It, you know, it is a town that has been known for activists. This, but I don't know if you really sensible, call this an sensible activist. millennial. Sensible millennial writes, "This is how ISIS would act in small towns until they got major backing." Yes, that is a tweet from one of our viewers, who tweeted me in the last minute. Milo seeks outrage. He is controlling the situation. Now I don't think he is because he's 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 left the building, and. Um, if you think that his views are completely off the grid, then let him speak and let him expose himself mm -hmm. verbally. Right. So many of you guys tweeting me. We will read some of your tweets as they come in. I'm going to go ahead and take you guys back now to these arrows. It looks as if the crowd has gotten larger at the Milo protest. Which is interesting because Milo's Berkeley already, has already canceled the event. Yeah, he's gone. At what, so, what are you protesting at this point? I think there's... Wasn't that the end goal? Wasn't the goal to shut down the event? I don't know what the goal was. I assume they wanted him not to speak or they and wanted to at least register their complaint about him speaking, which is fine. Well, but they've gotten that point across. That's the thing. But, you know, so again, the question is, an institution of higher learning should be about should be about exposing students to all points of view. There are going to be some you don't agree with, some you agree with, and you take it all and let the marketplace of ideas dictate what makes sense and what doesn't. But to just silence the guy and run him out of the campus strikes me as the ultimate act of intolerance. Right. This is supposed to be the real tolerant group, the all-inclusive group. We want, we love everybody. We want everybody a big arm around everybody in this in this um, in this country. And then they pull this stuff. And I think they undercut their argument. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a wise strategy. The, the protesters think it's great. They think they've really accomplished something tonight. They ran him off. But again, in the wider swath of America, for people who are trying to sort this stuff out and figure out who's got a better idea, um, it's a turnoff. Mm -hmm. And they, they're missing that. They're an echo chamber within their own ranks. Right. And, you know... They're having a party out there, and they think it's really cool, and it's, you know. But I, I, I think in terms, of, uh, in terms of what they're doing, they're damaging their credibility. Right. right. Well, Milo is a controversial figure. Now, for viewers who are just tuning in that may not know who he is, may not know much about him, his background, Milo did get banned from Twitter because of right. his point of view and things that he tweeted. He was often described as the ultimate Twitter troll, John. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, Twitter's got to do what they do. Mm -hmm. And either they gain customers or lose customers because of it. I don't know. I, what Leo said, I really like. He yeah. says, uh, what happened to, I don't agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. That's where I fall. Mm -hmm. Right. Everyone I mean, has... we went through this with the Supreme Court when the Nazis marched in Skokie, Illinois. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court said, as provocative as that is, in an overwhelmingly Jewish community, to let the KKK march down the streets of Skokie. And the Supreme Court said, that is protected speech. They have a right to have their march mm -hmm. in Skokie. Mm -hmm. What could be more provocative than that? Right. I have a question for you because I got this tweet uh, from a couple different people tuning in. The Supreme Court's spoken on this kind of stuff. A, a few people saying there's a difference between the right to free speech and hate speech. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you're, you're saying that the person who calls it hate speech mm -hmm. doesn't just label it hate speech. They act out in hate in the street and silence that speech. What, 
I mean, so that that makes it right. No, I'm just telling you what some viewers well, tweeted me in they the don't last understand, hour. I don't think they understand the First Amendment very well then. Mm. Because um, you have a right to peacefully assemble, mm -hmm. peaceably assemble. You have a right to express yourself. Um, you as don't long have the right to destroy property, though. No, that now you've crossed a line into criminal activity. Right. And the police are going to move in on that stuff. And they should. I mean, somebody could get hurt. What if somebody's killed in this deal? Are they going to feel good about the protests then? Right. Are they going to be really happy that they did this? Somebody ends up killed? An officer or somebody who's in their ranks? Mm -hmm. Maybe an innocent student who's just there hanging out right. on a Wednesday night? I mean, is it going to take that to kind of calm the water a little bit? I mean, this is crazy. It, it, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where it seems like every single day we're covering some sort of protest. The question is, why? And what because purpose? people don't like the outcome of the election. That's really what this is about. This isn't about Milo. It's partially about him, but it's a really... lot of it is about displeasure over the outcome of the election. But is there a way to voice that displeasure and concern without causing destruction? Yeah. Run for office and change it. Mm -hmm. Run for office. Get involved in your community. President Obama said it quite eloquently. Or protest peacefully. He said, get off your chair and do something. Well, they're getting off their chair and doing something. This isn't particularly constructive, right. I don't think. Destruction isn't the answer. I think you said it best when you were referencing what happened in Baltimore or Ferguson. You it's know, just... you're angry with the police and the stops of African Americans, and I totally understand that. And there is truth to, to this. There is truth to these issues. Statistics this is not... that support... This is not, concerns. this is not um, make believe, but at the same time, when you burn your community down in the process, what have you gained? Right. You got the national spotlight for a week or two, but for the wrong and reason. now you've got to live in your city that's a burned out Hulk. Mm -hmm. I don't think that makes much sense. Right. For a night of looting and, and insanity, um, you got noticed, that was good. Right. But did you need to destroy your town in the uh, in the process or destroy part of Ferguson? I right. mean, a lot of it's still, they're still trying to rebuild that mm -hmm. area. Try Good luck getting a business to move in there. Mm -hmm. Good luck getting a business, which is really the underpinning of all this, right. in it's Ferguson. People are acting out because of a lack of economic and educational opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now you've just stifled that with your, with your protests because good luck getting a business in there that might provide jobs for people. As one African-American leader, who I cannot remember the name of the person, they said, if these people had jobs, they wouldn't be out protesting. raising hell. Right, because a lot of these people weren't I'm protesting. talking about Ferguson now. These right. people are students yeah. and activists. But back with Ferguson and Baltimore, a lot of people were protesting, for not necessarily because they believed in the cause, but because they wanted to take advantage of the fact that people were rioting and breaking into places and looting and getting free stuff. Yeah. You know, we have thousands of people tuning in. I do want to thank all 7,000 of you who are tuning in on News Now on YouTube, as well as those of you tuning in on Facebook. We've been covering these protests turn. I, again, some people referring to the situation as a riot. We've been covering it now for about an hour and a half. Most I don't know of about the a violence riot. Um, has been contained to the UC Berkeley campus. My question is I guess the question, the thing I'm wondering is, will the protesters move away from campus and take their protests elsewhere in town? Well, sometimes, um, you know, they do march to downtown. Right, um, and you can see the group of people. It looks like they've walked away from that Sproul Plaza area of mm -hmm. Berkeley, the Berkeley campus. And it's a large crowd, hundreds of people gathered. You know, I, I would think that... Yeah. If these students, if it, the students in the group that are, you know, I mean, some of the brightest in the nation mm -hmm. who attend that university, that you would think that some of those people would say, okay, we're going we're gonna to let this guy speak, and we're going to attend, and we're going to stand up and challenge this guy mm -hmm. in a respectful way, but we're going to challenge his ideas. Expose students to that dialogue, I think that's much more productive. Right, I'm going to go ahead and take us back to the ground shots that we're getting in now from the Berkeley protest. I'm going to raise the volume, see if we can hear anything. Well, 
there were reports that police were going to be releasing tear gas. I didn't get an update as to whether they actually deployed any tear gas. You know, and again, on, on that, on that, I would say be very careful with that unless uh, you have students that are, or people in the, in the crowd that are destroying property and you need them to disperse for their own safety and the safety of others. But I think, you know, the right for them to be there and protest, I think you have to be a little bit careful being too heavy handed with that. But if there's destruction going on, then I think the police have to protect property. They have to protect people and make sure, you know, they can get this crowd dispersed so no one gets hurt. You know, that, that becomes, um, Okay, here's a statement from UC Berkeley 15 minutes ago. Amid violence, destruction of property, and out of concern for public safety, the University of California Police Department determined that it was necessary to remove uh, Milo. Milo. Yiannopoulos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's hard to say. Yiannopoulos, good Greek guy, um, from the campus and to cancel tonight's scheduled 8 p.m. performance. <laughs> performance? <laughs> he acts like it's a, it's a concert. At any rate... The decision was, it was made. It was a tour. It was no, a tour. No, I know. I know. Um, there's not a lot of music going on, I don't think. But the decision was made at about 6 p.m., two hours before the event. Officers read several dispersal announcements to the crowd. More than 1,500 protesters had gathered outside of Martin Luther King Jr. ASUC venue, Associated Students, University of California venue. So uh, he was escorted away from the event immediately and has left the campus. We condemn in the strongest possible terms of violence and unlawful behavior that was on display and deeply regret that those tactics will now overshadow efforts to engage in legitimate and lawful protest against the performer's presence and perspectives. Right on the money. Yeah. You know, their own, their own administration is saying, look, you know. Um, and they shared this photo. They, they kind of said what I said, that unfortunately this is undercut their own argument. Right, and can you read that last paragraph where they address the First Amendment? We regret that the threats and unlawful actions of a few have interfered with the exercise of First Amendment rights on a campus that is proud of its history and legacy as a home of the free speech movement. As Chancellor Nicholas Dirks made clear in his message to the Berkeley campus community, while Yiannopoulos views, tactics, and rhetoric are profoundly contrary to our own, we are bound by the Constitution, the law, our values and the campus's principles of community to enable free expression across the full spectrum of opinion and perspective. And let's go ahead and go to the ground. Yeah, it looks I, like I can't quite see uh, what's going on here, but protest. it appeared there was some kind of scuffle going on uh, between the protesters and uh, some other individuals. Again, we are right here um, on the steps of the building where this event was supposed to take place. Speaking now is our Fox Bay area reporter, so that's who we're listening into. Now. Hey, we've got uh, right information. Now, but, uh, there we've are got a number something of breaking here. In this Arizona Cardinals wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald will return to the Cardinals next season. That just broke. Oh wow, that's talk about a break from the action. <laughs> Where this event was supposed to take place upstairs oh, in this building. Uh, this is the Martin Luther King Student Union. Uh, this is where students would come. This is their Amazon center, as it were. Uh, students would come to, uh, you know, do homework and get together and, and all of that. But right now, windows are broken out. Are you on? There's an irony here that this is in the Martin Luther King Center. Martin Luther King would not Be approve. okay with this. He would not approve of this. He was all about peaceful resistance. Right. And over time, that carried the day. Even people who didn't like him said, you know, this guy, man, what restraint he shows in the face of hatred and bigotry. And he would, you know, he and the protesters and the people who marched. Wow. I mean, when you think of what Dr. King did in these kinds of situations, you, you can almost envision that he would stand up and say, listen, um, no violence. Right. He was all about nonviolence. And look, you can see an uh, injured protester yeah, you got, there. This is ridiculous, you know. I'm going to go ahead and increase the volume again, see if we can get audio from the ground. Yeah. 
You know what, uh, Dan and Alma, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, I've got with me right here Todd Walker. He's a, an activist, a youth activist, an advocate for youth in Oakland. What's your thought about this, Todd, as this has unfolded? Yeah, it's kind of getting out of control. You know, they don't get no message across, breaking and burning up stuff. It's kind of getting out of control. So they calm it down a little bit. They calm it down a little bit. I think it'll go all right. They do, they do need to be heard, though. Well, they set out to, to cancel this event. They succeeded in that, but do you feel like it's gone beyond that? Yeah, it's going too far right now. This, this, this is uncalled for. It's not going to get no message across. It's just tearing up everything. Yeah, it's not. This is, this, is, this is stupid right here. Do you think it defeats the message, whatever the message was to begin with? It do. It really do. It really do. Yep. They ain't, I mean, it's not proving nothing. It's not, what is it proving? You're just tearing up. Now, now the city got to pay. Now you're taking from the kids, because now the city got to pay to fix this problem right here. This. All right, Todd, thanks very much for talking with us. That's Todd Walker. He's a youth advocate and activist in Oakland and the East Bay. Uh, he was out here to voice his concerns about this event this evening. But as you heard, uh, clearly not uh, pleased at all with the turn that this has taken. And now we see uh, a young man on the steps who's uh, been injured. And we've seen a couple people now needing medical attention. Wow, John. He, uh, he nailed it. He absolutely nailed it. I mean, he summed up what you were saying Yeah, he, he's, he, uh, he understands, and he was probably a guy who, who understands the civil rights movement pretty well, too. That when you go down that road of, of bashing in your own student union, uh, the Martin Luther King Center, nonetheless, right. that it's pretty much everything that Dr. King would have uh, agreed to. Uh, it's everything he, I mean, he would, he would not have liked what he saw tonight. Uh, if, he, if he had been there, he would have probably uh, urged them not to go down this road. So, I don't know. And it's just interesting okay. still that all, the, okay. all these people are gathered, right even though right. the Milo name? speech My has now been canceled. I imagine that that was the goal of the protest. Why continue protesting if your goal was accomplished? I think it's a Pyrrhic victory. Um, you get Milo off your campus, but in the in the process, you end up looking foolish, and you don't allow uh, Milo to speak. Oh, I'm going to listen okay. in on this interview. And just have someone argue against you and just argue your point, but these people are being absolutely violent, and it's nothing like I've ever seen before. Nothing like anything I've ever seen before. Do you think? Um, do you think it defeats the message that they were trying to make or trying to project? Absolutely. Um, I think for a long time the left had the moral high ground in this country, but they're quickly ceding it to to these right wing, you know, alt writers. Because the moment an alt right person tries to speak out, you start punching people all over the place. You know, it's chaos. It's absolute chaos. All right. And your name again? My name is Sid. And you're a student. Yes, I'm a student. Thanks very much for talking with us. We're just trying to grab people as they're coming by. A lot of people are offering their viewpoints on how this is going down tonight. And uh, as you heard from uh, a lot of the folks we've talked with, uh, they were here for the same reasons that many of these protesters were here uh, for, and things have changed, and they're not pleased. Ah, madam. Another student. Yeah, Sid put it well, too. Uh, there seem to be people in the crowd who totally get it, that they're undercutting their own argument by doing this stuff. Right. Um, I thought it was really interesting when he said the left is ceding the, the moral high ground right. to, the, to, the, to the right by this kind of stuff. And again, you, you have to look at, you know, I made this, I made this point um, when Donald Trump spoke in Fountain Hills. Mm -hmm. And this I made, is back when he was campaigning yeah, to be president last and year. Puente and some other groups blocked traffic um, heading up to Fountain Hills. Right, that day. and that's uh, here in Arizona. Fountain Hills is a suburb of Phoenix. For those of and you I not had familiar with the area, the activists who the activists who did it, um, I had them on my Sunday show, Newsmaker Sunday, and I asked them, and I and I said, look, you know, I understand that that you disagree with Trump. All right. some arrests being some arrests are happening right now. Well, it looks like someone's being rushed in. Is that an arrest or is that no, an injury? No, that's somebody injured. They may be trying to treat him. I think somebody was injured there. Um, but I made my point to the protesters. I said, you know, 
the very people whose hearts and minds you're trying to change, by blocking traffic, you just tick people off. Mm -hmm. You lose them. Right. Even if they were open to your argument, then when they see that happen and you're inconveniencing them, um, they go, these people are, are knuckleheads mm -hmm. yeah. and they don't like it. Um, and they answered me in, a, in an interesting way. They said, sometimes this is how you get noticed. Mm -hmm. And their point was, think about all the coverage we got that night about blocking that road. It's true, though. And it they took got a time, lot of coverage. It took time away from Donald Trump. And so they thought, even though they inconvenienced some people, mm -hmm. that in terms of media, they sucked some of the media away from Donald Trump and to themselves. Right. So. You think that's a similar, um, sim what's going on here? I don't know. I don't know if they thought this through that well. I, I think, if anything, this is giving Milo more attention because I think there's a huge group of the public that didn't even know who he was prior to maybe watching some of the protest coverage. Milo his stock probably went up tonight because he's a provocateur right. and um, probably his appearance fee is going to go up because of this. People will pay even more to try to get him somewhere where, where he can be heard. Mm -hmm. It may not be on college campuses mm -hmm. because there may be too much concern about this kind of thing, right. violence. Um, but he'll find a platform. I mean, he's with Breitbart. He does radio all the time. He does podcasts. He's all over the place. So he's he's going to be heard. Why not let him be heard tonight in Berkeley and then argue with him over ideas and thoughts and values? Have smart kids in the room who mm -hmm. say, OK, Milo, let me tell you where I'm coming from on this and have a have an exchange with them. Um, to me, this. Um, this is really, it's its very look heavy at this, handed. Look at the student center. Yeah, now, you know, who's going to pay for that? The kids are going to pay for that, as that, as that African-American uh, gentleman said. You know, so. It is a public university. Is this where taxpayer money in California is going? This is a public university. It's not a private school. Right, right. So, well, you've heard my opinion about it. <laughs> right. I don't think it's very productive. I think they I think they hurt their argument. My parents are paying California taxes. I'll just leave it at that. My dad's still paying them, so. I know, we're both California natives. We probably know tons of people who went to UC Berkeley. I'm looking at some of the comments as they stream by here. Right, lots of comments, lots of tweets coming in Milo as well. made his point without saying a word. You know, there's a lot of truth to that. Oh, Milo doesn't charge speaking fees. Okay. That is according to one viewer who tweeted me. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, I don't know. I, I assume that a lot of these folks get speaking fees. Maybe on a college campus he doesn't. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch to our live uh, aerial feed as well. It looks like... I, I think bottom what? line is if this oh, is... More the, chaos on the other feed. People are attacking yeah. other people. I'm going to go ahead and increase this audio again. You know, again, you know. Well, there was a guy in the crowd that had a, a 49er shirt on, a red shirt. I'm not sure what he was doing. I don't know if he it was, was expressing over uh, football? an opposite Who viewpoint. Knows? But as you can see, they went after him pretty quickly, and uh, he ran out towards Maybe the he expressed support the for the guy who was speaking Milo, or yeah, maybe he... Um, but you don't need to punch someone who has a differing opinion, guys. You don't need to physically harm someone that doesn't no, that's, agree that's with your where, point of that's view. That's where we are right now. It feels like it. 2016, 2017, it's a really interesting time. I mean, I was just in Europe and I was talking to people and a lot of people were actually telling me they were afraid to come to America right now because of the things they see on the news. They think that they'll get involved in like a protest or a mass shooting or something. Like the view of America is really interesting abroad. It's not. It's not the. Um, it's not the proudest moment in the free speech movement tonight in Berkeley. Right. You know. And we magnify all this stuff because we show you the very worst of the worst in a crowd like this. So. Right. We're partially to blame. There's a lot of mellow people just hanging around. <laughs> right. Taking selfies and stuff. So. It's not all agitators, but. Right. Mellow but again, people like Sid, who was just interviewed minutes yeah. ago. Who's a very smart guy. I mean, he, he obviously has thought this through. 
And now there's some people just dancing in protest. This is a better protest, some dances. Wave of people going out that direction, and then they kind of stopped, and some of them came back. And so, yes, I would think, though, that at this point, a fair number of them have moved out down towards Telegraph and Bancroft. I'm not sure. Uh, you could probably see better than I can uh, what exactly they're doing out there. Uh, probably just gathering as well. Are the streets closed over there? <laughs> Has this protest turned into a dance party? <laughs> oh, really? Well, at least it's peaceful. Right. If this was the protest the entire time, no one ha would have any problems with it. I do want to read a few tweets coming in from the viewers. I'm going to go ahead and put the tweets on the air for just a moment. A good way to tell protesters and rioters apart. Rioters cover their faces so cops can't identify them after they break yeah, the law. They've also got, they've also got um, stuff on their face to uh, avoid tear gas. Right. So they're, they're ready for battle when they, when they break out the... Uh, when they break out the masks, they're ready for, you know, confrontation. Right. And this tweet from Jonathan, I wish all of these lunatics would spend four years in the military, let alone Afghanistan. I bet they see things from a new point of view. That is a really interesting point. I've been talking to people about this a lot lately, that I really think a great change in our country mm -hmm. would be to go to the Israeli model and actually have compulsory military service mm -hmm. for everyone. Everybody's got to do a year. I think it would, I think it would be great for the country if that happened, mm -hmm. um, because everybody would have a serious stake in what's going on, not just lip service, not just take, 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 um, but that everybody gives back to the country in some fashion, where we're not fighting wars with predominantly. Um, Predominantly, a lot of kids, maybe even from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, right. who end up fighting our wars for us. That everybody goes. That the college kids aren't just immune from this. Mm -hmm. That they have to do some service, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've said this before. It's my greatest regret in life that I did not serve in the military. Mm -hmm. I wish I had. Because I think I'd have far more appreciation for what we have here. Right. And I think, I think it would be good for everybody to do a little time in the military. And that's kind of a radical idea, but I, I kind of believe it. Again, for those of you just joining us, you're looking at live images coming from the UC Berkeley campus. This is the most peaceful we've seen it all night. A group of kids dancing in protest. Really, again, this is the most peaceful point of the evening, in my opinion. Earlier today, we saw fires. We saw people getting hurt. Jeffrey Pune tweeting me, why did the Berkeley police sit back and allow this? Anyone? Trees burning, broken windows at a student center, kids hurt? Well, I think they did move in. They did, they did apparently deploy some pepper spray and tear gas and some rubber bullets. Um, I don't know at what point that all happened, but usually when destruction of property starts, they got to try to, they got to try to reclaim the, the area and not let it happen. This is interesting. Go ahead and read that from one of our viewers. Terrorism. Sharing the definition of terrorism. The unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political aims. Jordan wants to know if Milo will reschedule his performance. <laughs> I don't want them. His performance. To think they can I love him. that term. It's like he's doing hand puppets up there. Uh, it's like performance art. Right. Um, would you call what Milo does a performance? Maybe. I mean, perhaps putting on a show. Let's go back now to what were once protests. Now looks like a dance party at UC Berkeley. <laughs> Again, I'm going to go ahead and increase the volume, see if they're chanting anything. The speech itself has been canceled. It's like it's just music. It's a dance party in Berkeley. Which I think should have been what they 
decided in the first place. If they had sent out a campus-wide email, those groups for that wanted a dance to protest, party. for a dance party in opposition to Milo, I think that would have still gotten <laughs> so much press com- coverage because it, it would be so weird and coverage. unique. And now we're watching it. And everyone, I mean, this is at least nonviolent. Imagine if they just danced and no, no windows were shattered, no one was injured, nothing was burned. Um, Maybe people would have paid attention a little more. Well, they're paying attention. I, I, I guess if you had a dance party, it would have not gotten, uh, it wouldn't have been taken seriously. Fair. Um, this, this was taken seriously, but I don't think in it. the way that, it, upon reflection, they may think that they didn't help their cause very much. Right. Expel them all. Right. I want to go <laughs> That's ahead and... uh, one of the comments we just got. And now this is the scene on campus outside the venue where Milo was supposed to speak. I want to go ahead and, and take you to this other scene. This is in the town of Berkeley itself, a little bit of off campus. You can see some of the people that were involved in the protest migrated over here. You can see a large crowd. I believe officers are also here on scene. Not quite sure what is going on exactly here, but I do know our Fox station in the Bay Area is monitoring this intersection specifically. So I did want to go ahead and give you guys a view of that live aerial shot as well. Very close to the Berkeley campus, very close to the Oh yeah, venue. right in the middle of it really. Yeah. I mean you're right on you're right on the edge of it right there. So well, um, for the protesters, the right is going to have a field day with this tomorrow. <laughs> They're gonna use this as a a weapon of mass destruction against the left. Right. So, you know. That's where we're at right now. Again, look at those images of the shattered windows, John. Yeah, and that looks like a rock thrown against the window probably that causes that. I suppose rubber bullets could possibly shatter, but uh, hard to know. But they broke windows. I don't know that, uh, you know, I wonder what, what politicians think about this. Say, senators in Washington who are trying to thwart Trump nominees. And they're probably watching this thinking this paints us into a corner where this looks like our cause, our side. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily want this as the, as the um, postcard for your side. Because it's going to turn a lot of people off. Right. And that was kind of my point at the beginning. We, do you change hearts and minds of people whose minds can be changed with this kind of stuff? I think that's really the... The question. The question that, that somebody, when they organize this, better ask. Um, I, I think you're far better off arguing, letting Milo speak and arguing with him in a respectful way. And if you don't like what he's saying, try to expose it through, um, as I said earlier, the marketplace of ideas. Right. So. I want to share one more viewer tweet just because I'm amused by this one. <laughs> Does UC Berkeley not give out homework? I spent a lot of my undergrad hours in the library. No time for impromptu dance parties. <laughs> for me, that's the, that's the tweet of TJ, the night. TJ, thank you for that. That was we the tweet of the laugh. night. That's good. Yep. And for those of you who don't understand the reference, just minutes ago, we watched the protest crowd. Erupt into an impromptu dance party. Right. Right. Well, it's early in the semester. Yeah, weeks in. we're not into the heavy lifting yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's not midterm. Anybody yet. who's been to college, there's plenty of downtime. Oh yeah. Especially if you don't have a heavy, heavy duty major. Right. And I'm sure neither of us did. I had a broadcast journalism major. Oh come on! I would you say call that, that heavy is a duty? very heavy duty. I had a lot of. I had a lot of free projects time. I had to do. Yeah, well, a you got projects, reports. but once the project's done, what are you going to do? Well, You're going to have a dance well, party. I, I worked four days a week at our student news station. I no, was Milo. Then. Somebody asked, did Milo was Milo hurt? No. Milo was spirited out of there at about uh, 6 o'clock because of the uh, threats. And he's going to have a field day with this. This will end up being, this will be branded 
the intolerant left on a campus that's been all about free speech. Right. You know, and, and that, I don't think that that's what they wanted to accomplish, and that's what will come out of this. Most people, most, will not look very kindly on this whole thing. Right. Again, viewers, we're also monitoring the aerial feeds just to make sure nothing too crazy is happening in the town of Berkeley itself. We do know that some of the protesters marched away from campus more towards the city center. It doesn't look like a lot of activity there. So we're I wonder continue. if Donald Trump will tweet about this tonight. Let's see what he has tweeted so far. Well, he tweeted 35 minutes ago, but specifically about Iran and Iraq. Iran is rapidly taking over more and more of Iraq, even after the U.S. has squandered $3 trillion there. So that's what's on Donald Trump's mind right now. Yeah. I don't know. Well, Donald he has Trump reason. He has reason to be concerned about Iran. There have been some provocative actions they've taken with uh, test firing of missiles. And there's a real argument right now over whether those um, those missile firings over the weekend constitute a violation of our nuclear deal with Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, Iran says no because they weren't armed with uh, any ordnance or warheads. But the U.S. is saying just the launch of the missiles is a provocative action that is banned by the treaty. So um, this is what's on Trump's mind and with good reason. This stuff in Berkeley will come and go. I mean, Berkeley always has this kind of stuff. Um, but Trump's got serious, serious issues on his table, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get back to my day job. All right, John Hook, thank you okay. for joining us. If okay, you guys so want to hear more from John, you can watch the Fox 10 News at 9 o'clock. You can See watch you later, it guys. on fox10phoenix.com. We're going to continue to bring you these live images coming in from the protest at UC Berkeley. Milo's speech shut down, canceled, following the violent protests at UC Berkeley. Milo is now speaking live on Facebook Live. I'm going to go ahead and play that for you in the corner of your screen. Milo speaking right now on Facebook Live. ...of conflating um, ideas with action. And the reason they want to do that, the reason they, they introduce these words like student safety, like if you're a conservative speaker, you represent a threat to student safety. They do it to blur the lines between ideas and action. Why? To legitimize their own violent responses to somebody else's political opinions. They don't like what I have to say about feminism, for instance, or Black Lives Matter, or the you know campus wage gap conspiracy, or the, the sorry campus rape culture conspiracy, or the wage gap, or any of the other things that I like to investigate with facts, reason, and logic. They don't like responses to that, so they claim that I'm a threat to student safety. Now, universities are complicit in this stuff. They haven't just inculcated the um, the environment in which it, it springs up, but they actively pander to it, and in some cases even fund it. it seems to me that. Um, the alumni who write to me and say they're horrified by the state of their own old schools. And we had an instance actually just this week at, um, where was it now? At Bucknell, where a um, very prominent donor to Bucknell, an alumnus, is a Trump supporter. And he started being abused and insulted by Bucknell's current students. Well, these are the guys that keep the places ticking over. 
So, you know, it's not for me to tell American higher education institutions, American universities and colleges, how to proceed. But something very disturbing happened this evening, and it was an expression of political violence in response to a not particularly conservative gay speaker on an American college campus, a visitor from, uh, from the UK who had come, you know, to, to express his views, to speak to students, to, to start a, a discussion, a dialogue. Um, something very disturbing happened on uh, UC Berkeley campus this evening. And the response to it from other colleges, I think, is going to determine um, whether people really lose faith entirely in the American higher education system, whether they you know, are prepared to send their kids to these places and to keep funding these places. But in the, in the meantime, I'm just sitting in a hotel room, stunned that hundreds of people were throwing rocks, um, throwing uh, goodness knows what else at the building, throwing fireworks at the police, and had to be subdued, according to reports I heard, with tear gas and non-lethal bullets, because they're so threatened by the idea that a conservative speaker might be persuasive and interesting and funny, and might persuade, you know, might take some people with him, um, they just have to shut it down at all costs. As America, America of all places now is a scene of political violence in response to ideas. It's very shocking, but I'm safe, my team is safe, and... Um, I'm sure So that was Milo's Facebook live stream in response to the protests at Berkeley that forced his event to be canceled. Again, these are live aerials coming in of that protest. On the ground, you can see music playing now. What was once a violent protest has now seemingly turned slightly peaceful. Well, the noise is coming from. Mama, Dan, um, I, I just got to, hi, I was just going to say you were talking about where Milo might be when all of this is going on. My understanding is he's uh, making an appearance on some cable news networks. Is he talking about this? Yeah, we should check that out because... you can see uh, go ahead well I was gonna say I don't know if you can see uh, from no actually I think they, they've again kind of retreated I mean they've been up on that balcony the whole time we haven't seen any except inside the building down on the ground floor um, 
You can see, uh, okay, now they're about to make another announcement. Let's listen. Again, just another dispersal order and another warning about what might happen if there's a failure to disperse. And I don't know if you could hear from the, uh, from our audio, uh, my microphone, but as soon as he starts talking, the police officer, the crowd starts making noise. They've got uh, horns and noisemakers, and they're doing everything they can to drown out his message. Um, but I could hear at least the part where he's now given probably his seventh dispersal order. He noted the time and he let these folks know that a failure to disperse could result in the use of force, uh, chemical agents and the like by the police. But uh, at this point, as you can see from Randy's shot, uh, the police are up on the balcony, but uh, that's as far as they've come. Yeah, they, right. They've given several of those. Yeah, they've given several of those. They've noted the time. They've said you've got five minutes. You've got ten minutes. Uh, but again, so far we haven't seen any action uh, on their part. What you're looking at was that. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but um, like I told you earlier, for the most part, people have the demonstrators have, uh, you know, uh, not been concerned at all about what we're doing. But uh, we are getting some now that are at least trying to put flashlights in front of the camera or lights in front of the camera to try to uh, diffuse the pictures that we're sending. I'm also uh, learning from a law enforcement source that you've seen the uh, police officers up on the balcony and they're holding what looked like kind of uh, shotgun type devices. Uh, we didn't know if those were uh, tear gun uh, canister guns or what that might be and I'm told that those are actually uh, to fire wood pellets, uh, wood pellets into the crowd as a way to, a uh, non-lethal way to uh, get people to maybe move back, that sort of thing. So you're seeing what looks like the police officers are holding some kind of uh,
gun, uh, sawed off shotgun type thing. Uh, I'm told those are actually to, to fire wood pellets. A non lethal device that shoots wood pellets. Yeah. I'm actually behind Randy, but um, I'm cool. Can you hear me? Alright guys, I want to go ahead and show you guys this tweet before I wrap up our News Now coverage. One of the viewers shared this tweet with me. It's kind of disturbing. Uh, this tweet that came in. My friend was giving an interview when some coward pepper sprayed her at Berkeley. So this friend was in attendance at the event. You can see she's wearing a make, a make, it appears to be a Make America Great Again hat. Watch this 30 second clip. So you can see that she was pepper sprayed in the end. I'm going to go replay it for you. I know the audio wasn't playing loudly. I'm going to increase the audio. You can hear this woman give an interview and then get pepper sprayed in the end. It's clear she's wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Oh, I don't know. It's just protesters here right now. Who knows? Who knows? I think it's still up in the air. What did you want to hear? I'm not exactly certain what you mean by that necessarily. What did you want to hear? Are you surprised? Our legislation is so 